This is CNC World, a new perspective. A recent study by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in the United States has revealed an alarming increase in the prevalence of autism in children. Scientists collected data at 14 sites throughout the U.S. and found a 78% increase in autism compared to a previous study from 2002. And Brendan is one such child suffering from the condition. But luckily, things are improving thanks to the love from his family and help from research groups like Autism Speaks. Brandon loves to play with stuffed animals just like any other child. The nine-year-old is especially fond of penguins and dolphins. Brandon, however, is not like most children. He was diagnosed with autism, a development neurological disorder which causes a variety of behavioral issues when he was just two years old. According to a recent study released by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control, one in 88 children are now suffering from autism. I think the first thing that went across my, my head was, holy crap, um, dismayed, because the numbers were already high when Brandon was diagnosed, and that's, that's seven years ago already. It was one in 166, and now we're at one in 88. And I, I don't think we're still any closer to any answers as to why the incidence rate keeps rising. I don't think... I don't think we've seen um, the incident rate, rate stop rising yet, um, which is also alarming. According to research group Autism Speaks, more children are now affected by autism than by diabetes, cancer, AIDS, cerebral palsy, and Down syndrome combined. It is still unclear what causes the disorder, but doctors and scientists believe there may be a variety of risk factors at play. Now we have some preliminary evidence that uh, for example, maternal age, paternal age, age of the parents might, might confer additional risk to, to the individual. Also, low birth weight or prematurity is, has been identified as a possible risk factor. Those are very, some very early findings that suggest things like pesticides and other industrial chemicals may play a role. So we really don't know, have the full picture at this point in terms of what are the genetic environmental f and environmental risk factors that are at play, but we're doing more research and we're gonna find out more. Children with autism suffer from a lack of emotional response during common social interactions. Since the age of two, Brandon has undergone a variety of therapies to help him respond to social cues. He is now able to communicate with his parents, he has friends at school, and he has learned to give his mother a hug. It's really difficult when you're putting everything into a child and you don't get that emotional feedback. Um, and you can't tell if what you're saying or what you're doing is being understood. And you can't tell if your child knows that you love them. That's, good. That's I think, to me, the more heartbreaking thing, for you to sit there with your child and to love them with everything that you have and to not know if your child even knows that you're mommy or daddy or that you love them with everything. Early intervention is key for helping autism. Brandon is attending a school for autistic children which emphasizes social interaction, occupational therapy, and behavioral training. It's important to, to remember that individual autism are not necessarily uh, deficient in any, in any part of their emotion repertoire or the ability to understand the environment. The, the difficulty they struggle with is social interactions. So like right now, as we're talking, um, I understand from your expression whether you're interested or not interested. That doesn't come naturally with individuals on the spectrum. So intervention is really helping them to learn these social cues. As Brandon gets older, the school will also teach him to live more independently. He and his classmates will be taught how to cook, how to keep an apartment clean, and how to make and keep a schedule. We need to start integrating them into society. There's going to be a whole generation. Like I said, it's less than a decade away. There's a whole generation of these children coming up. And they need to be a part of society. There are many of them that, given the right supports and given the right accommodations, could go into the workforce and live independent lives and their lives are no more or less valuable than anybody else's and they deserve that chance. 
Autism Speaks is working with a variety of research groups and hospitals in the United States, as well as in other countries like China, to find clues of what might cause the disorder. The group is also working with employers on how to integrate young adults with autism into the workforce. This is CNC World, a new perspective.